Yeah, let's talk some football on the Sportsmax Zone. 16 games have now been completed in the rare nephew Jamaica Premier League. And it was a very fruitful match week for the top five, including West Kingston rivals Tivoli and Arnett Gardens. Both teams picked up 2-1 wins on Monday night against Vare United and Harborview, respectively. The Junglists got their win in the feature game. And it's safe to say their head coach, Xavier Gilbert, was pretty pleased with the performance. That we didn't get the clean sheet, um, but I think that the team played well tonight. I think we started off right on the front foot that we, we, we expected, you know. We played with a good um, good pace, um, good intensity in the first half. I think second half we weren't, we didn't have the same intensity where we started. Um, and that's expected sometimes, but I think we managed ourselves well. Um, but I think it was a good performance and I, I think we dominated and deserved to be victors tonight. Yeah, very much the case with us to break down the action is our in-house football analyst. Lance Whitaker, who is a very kind teacher and grader, calls him our ace football analyst. I just prefer to say in-house football analyst. He was on commentary on Monday night. Lijay Williams, he's who we're talking about. You probably already know. Lijay, how are you doing today? Well, I was doing much better before your introduction, but I'm doing pretty well, you know, I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> You're a tough lad. I'm sure you'll survive. Um, Kaheem Dixon. Yeah. did more than survive making his Arnett debut last night. What a goal. What a terrific goal. Talk to me about the young man and what I would call a banging return to the JPL. Yeah, he was absolutely fantastic. Um, I think that he added a lot of pace and incision into Arnett's game, especially down the flanks. Something that I think that they've been missing a lot. You know, They've been fielding a front three of three players that I think are more goal threats as opposed to which, which Kaim Dixon is a goal threat but of course he can add so many things on the transition and in settled play as well in terms of his dribbling and creative ability as well. Um, in, even in schoolboy football, three consecutive seasons with double digit assists so he's not only a goal scorer despite being so good at it so he has so many great traits that I think Arnett really were aided by last night and he really added a different dimension to what they were trying to do. Because as I was going to say, that they use three goal-scoring attackers usually up front in Shea Smith, Fabian Reed since he's come back, and Warner Brown. I think he added something new, something fresh, and that gave Harborview a, a, a world full of problems last night. Yeah, how much do you rate the goal and why? Oh, it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, you know, Kaim Dixon, uh, for the past year or so, tends to give me some of my favourite moments on commentary as well. Because as soon as he took the first touch and cut in onto that right foot, I knew, I think the whole stadium knew as well, that that goal was going to find the back of the net. If he could see the replay of the goal as well, his, his facial expression, the focus in his eyes as he was about to kick the ball, he knew exactly where he wanted to place it. Uh, and he's becoming, he has a hunger for scoring goals. And that's something that carries you very far in the game. And I think that he's going to go pretty far in the game if he keeps up what he's doing right now. Yeah, and the fact is that it has to be emphasised, Lej, that he's not new to playing big man football. He's a teenager, still a schoolboy, but he was a prolific goal scorer with the uh, Chapleton Maroons in tier two football to qualify them for the Premier League the season when they did. So he is comfortable playing, playing big man football. Yeah, and he, he played out of position, one might say. So far, when I've seen him in the Jamaica Premier League, he has played in the middle areas, either up front or slightly behind the striker. Last night we saw him on the flank, either on the right or on the left, he alternated a lot. But especially on the left flank where he was able to have the unpredictability to drive on the outside or coming onto his stronger right foot, I think he showed a lot of poise, he created, he put in a good couple of crosses as well. Should have had more than one goal as well, Mr. Sitter in the first half. Yeah, so, I think I saw that. Yeah, yeah so he was... He was all over the field, he linked up really well. And one thing that I really liked about his performance and even his teammates, you could see their immediate trust in him. Fabian Reed deferred to him yeah. in several situations, giving him the ball in areas where we usually would expect Fabian Reed to try and get off a shot himself. So you can see that they trust him and he's a certified bugs man. There's nothing more you can say about him. Yeah, and despite Andrew Fagon's uh, consolation goal for Harborview, the team continues to lose. It's their sixth defeat in a row. Yeah, uh, Harborview aren't looking on the up right now. You know, it's been a rough season for them. Um, I asked Coach Lodder Bernard after the game, you know, th this is not a situation that you're used to. Um, how are you coping if you still have the, the, the faith to 
climb up the table. You know, naturally, he said that he owes it to the community to climb up the table, but 11th place is not somewhere that we're used to seeing Harborview as much of a late blooming team that they are. And I think that they really just put themselves too far behind, as I've been saying for quite a number of weeks now, to really claw back at that top six race. Um, I, I think the teams above them are just a little bit better. When you talk about Mobe, Waterhouse, Dumbo Holding, all of those teams are getting better as the weeks go by. And even if Harborview were to get better as well and try and climb, they wouldn't be able to climb enough, in my opinion, to really alter the table too much. I got the impression in your post-match interview last night with Ludlow Bernard, the Harborview coach, that even in defeat, there were aspects of last night's game that he felt encouraged by. Yeah, in, especially in the second half, I think that they strung together a lot of good chances. I think that they were actually on top in the game, especially after putting the Maros on in the second half. They were controlling the midfield much better. But, you, you know, when you, when you give away the ball in certain areas, when you're unable to defend in transition as they were, they, they couldn't stop Arnett in transition. Two quick goals and then all of a sudden you're behind the eight ball and there's nothing you can do about that, especially with a team like Arnett. I'm surprised they even conceded in the end because Arnett have made a habit of closing out games really well. Eight clean sheets in the league. You can see the frustration in Asher Hutchinson in the net as well when that goal went in. So it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't something that I was expecting. But nonetheless, Arnett were the better team over the 90 minutes. They definitely deserve to win. Um, Harborview not doing too well right now is all I can say. Yeah, um, what do you make of the competitiveness of the league this season, Lejay? Four points separating leaders Mount Pleasant from fifth place Tivoli Gardens. Um, then you have sixth place Waterhouse all the way back on 23 points. But the top five seem to have separated themselves from the rest, even as they are extremely close. Yeah, I think you could see that very early in the season. It's very evident, or it was very evident to me at least, the quality gap between the top five and the rest of the league. Um, I expected Dumbo Holding to be a little bit closer to that pack, but you know they're under new management, so I guess it's taking time for them to acclimatise fully. Waterhouse, they've lost a lot of players, so I didn't expect them to be all the way up there. But the top five in terms of quality, I think at this current moment it would be hard to pick which one of the top five would are going to be able to push on and get the title. I think all of them have a claim. All of them are very strong defensively. All of them are pretty good in attack as well. A Cavalier will have their issues because they'll be missing players and going forward. But I think all of them are on equal footing offensively and defensively. It's going to come down to the really fine margins, the really um, tight plays, in, especially when it comes down to the playoffs, the quality players and, you know, just coaches being really good. Uh, that, I don't know how else to put it. When you mention coaches being really good because Jerome Waite and what he's been doing with Tivoli this season shouldn't be understated. I think this Tivoli Gardens team is absolutely fantastic. Their tactical understanding on and off the ball is really good. You know, even though at times they'll, you know, not be playing the way that he would want to going more direct. Once they get the ball on the ground and start doing what they're doing on any type of surface against any team, really, as we've seen this season, they can be a handful. And I think that they're a team that, coming from a last season conceding 42 goals, being one of the worst defences in the league now, only conceding, what, 13 or 14, I think this Tivoli team has a real chance, especially if they continue, continue to improve to really go all the way this season. Do you see them going in the right direction and how much credit do you give to coach Jerome Waite? I give all the credit to him because coaching is a... It, I mean, players make coaches because you need the right players for the coach to look good. But And I think Tivoli had the exact right profiles to execute what Jerome Waite wanted to do. But the improvement that he has made to some of the players when you think about the league's top second scorer, the second top scorer and Justin Dunn, even though Nikolai Fuller and some of the attack, other attacking players haven't been scoring, their impact on and off the ball is really good as well in midfield. Nathan Thomas getting back into the Premier League, I think, has slotted in really well. Tevin Gar Kevin Garnett has slotted in really well. Howard Morris, I think, has been fantastic. And even someone like Horatio Morgan, who has been on the periphery so much for the past couple of seasons, coming off the bench. And not only the goals, he just looked fantastic all around in his all-around play and scored two really well. It's the second goal, especially the bicycle kick, was fantastic. So I think the improvement has to go all down to him. 
he has to get all of the credit for that and the players have adjusted really well to what he would want to do as well. Yeah, and Lish, before we wrap the segment, um, Treasure Beach and Lime Hall had come into the league as promoted teams with high hopes and there was a general feeling that they wouldn't do as badly as Chabelton Maroons and Falklands had done the previous years, the previous year. But Treasure Beach are now on an 11-game losing streak and the Lime Hall are on an 8-game losing streak and they're doing really badly. Why? <laughs> well, I usually try not to say anything controversial on the show, but there's no, there's, there's no reason why the Jamaica Premier League should have more than 12 teams, if we're being very honest. The, with, Jamaica doesn't have the amount Ten. of... Well, they have 12 They now. have 14 they now. They have 14 now. Okay. So yeah. But people think that it should be 10, but go ahead. Yeah. yeah, even lower because we don't have the talent pool to suffice to have so many teams as in and we see it or the financial resources to be honest and the quality might suffer exactly and that's exactly what's happening and it's going to keep on happening because i'm not saying that these teams are badly coached or they aren't giving enough effort but we saw it last season and we saw it we're seeing it now in this season the players just simply aren't good enough and there's nothing you can do about that there's very little a coach can do to supplement the difference between a, a, a d level player and a b level player so even though a team like Veer, they don't have the greatest players by any stretch of the imagination, they have some quality in there as well. But a team like Veer, as opposed to a team like Lime Hall, we shouldn't be able to see that stark of a difference between the quality in terms of the players. And that's what we're seeing and that's what we're going to continue seeing if we have so many teams in the league. Because Jamaica does simply, we don't have enough good players to supplement a 14-team league. Mm. All right, um, we're out of time, but I'm going to steal 15 seconds. Earlier you were um, speaking about Kahim Dixon, I think it was, and you spoke about his stronger right foot. Um, does he have a weaker right foot? <laughs> Can we wrap? <laughs> Let's go to break. <laughs> Ricardo, be nice to him. <laughs>